I used to do a seven day portrait challenge. This is where we're at now. I used to think that I needed to be in a city. See, this is what I'm worried about. I actually love that. Oh, see, that's better. It's a brand new week. Welcome back to the studio. I've been over the weekend painting my wheelbarrow. I've done two coats and I've used one can of spray paint, but it's dried pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with the way that this has dried. And I think that's gonna cover, which is great. Um, I had a bit of a patch here where I put too much spray paint on and it like dribbled. So I've I sort of patted it a little bit with some paper towel. My arm is so achy. Let me see if I can, oh, my car keys. <gasps> Jack will be pleased because I always lose my bloody car keys, but they're in here. So the side that I wanted to use for the wheelbarrow is the one that I've obviously damaged. I mean, that's just typical, but it's fine. I think I can edit it out in Photoshop. If I'm doing anything and I think this is an imperfection, I just think, right, it's fine. I can just edit it in Photoshop, but I still like to have all my props made to the highest standard. So it's a bit annoying that that happened, but whatever, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm currently just on my computer at the moment inside, uh, just replying to a few inquiries, emails, I'm just prepping things for Adobe next week. Probably just gonna come back in here and do the spray painting. But yeah, I need to think about next what florals I'm gonna be putting in. Obviously they all need to be orange as well. So I need to think about all that. And so I was even thinking that, or maybe, I don't know, using generative fill, but I don't want to risk shooting it and then the generative fill just like completely up, going off. Um, I've been using generative fill for quite a while now in my work and I'm really enjoying using it. Do still like within these sets to keep everything like as real as possible. And I'm only using it really for like expanding the frame or like adding in little bits, but obviously generative fill's only been around since the beginning of this year and I've not actually done a set with that capability or the capability of that in Photoshop. So I'm actually quite excited to see what I can create in generative fill on my set pictures. Well, the colour project. So yeah, I'm just really excited actually to see what I can do, but I don't want to risk shooting the orange project and then obviously using generative fill to fill in gaps and then it not works. So for example, if I wanted it to create in a floral arrangement, and I want to know it's gonna look good, but sometimes it can be a bit hit, hit and miss. I mean, it would save a lot of money and a lot of time. I don't know, because I don't know if I want to do fake florals, but I want them to be orange. So this is my dilemma. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying the conceptualizing as I'm going on. I know I mentioned it in last, week video, last week's video. I wanted to make these diaries like weekly. So obviously I'm showing what I'm doing weekly and it just feels like quite authentic to just show you how I'm doing things on a day-to-day -day basis or, or a week-to-week -week basis and show you the process that I go through. And not all the time with these projects is it like a week and I'm finished. It's sometimes like six weeks or three months. Like the telephone project took about three to four months to completely complete and then the what was it the green project i think took about 12 weeks so three months the yellow project i think took a little while but not as long i am the type of person that i like to create really quick really quickly over the years i've done seven days with holly which kind of like catapulted my creativity started to hone in on what i really like from my art and the concepts that create my style but i feel like with these projects i I've told myself to not restrict myself to a deadline and just let them flow. And I feel like that's what I needed from this set building. It's been quite satisfying just to have something that's like ongoing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I used to do a seven day portrait challenge. And essentially what I would do is create the concepts probably before, but sometimes on the day, then shoot, edit, upload, and then upload a YouTube video of behind the scenes. And I would do that every day for a week. It was a lot, a lot of work, but it was so satisfying because I was kind of like challenging my own self-doubt in it. I think that's kind of what I went into it with. Like I challenged my way of thinking towards my work. So sometimes I'd sit on an image and criticize it to death and then I wouldn't ever want to like show the world or let it be out there. Whereas with the seven day self-portrait challenge, I was like challenging my perfectionism. But when I moved into this studio, I didn't want it just to be like churning out concepts after concepts and like not really focusing on detail. Hence why I went completely opposite way and decided 
to do these projects where I would focus on every single minor, minor detail to the point where I knew it was exactly how I wanted it and exactly the right outcome. Anyway, with that being said, I've kind of missed doing a seven days with Holly. I stopped them probably about 2020. I did them for about four or five years. And I, I was thinking recently, I'm quite open to maybe doing another one. And I've set up a week in my diary. I'm not going to say when it is because I don't want to commit to it yet. But I just, I'm saying it out loud now so that I can potentially do it. Good morning. It's lovely this morning. I'm just on a little walk with Pepper. Try to come out every day. So good for my brain. I've literally just been thinking about how I used to live in London, how busy and hectic my life used to be. I actually went to University of Westminster and I used to live in a place called Harrow, which was sort of on the outskirts of London, but still very much London. Then I moved into a place in Maidervale and it was so beautiful. The house was amazing, the, the flat I should say, because it was a flat. We had such a good time there. Oh, it was just so beautiful to live in such a like busy, you know, hectic area. So yeah, then I moved to Tunbridge Wells to be with Jack and we owned a house there for, well, we owned it for about four years, but we lived in Tunbridge Wells for about seven years. That's what all my videos were in the, the my past videos were in the bedroom of, of my house down south. In 2020, we decided to move up north back to my parents' house. We didn't actually intend on staying this long, but we ended up four years later, we're here still. Um, but it's such a nice area to live. I absolutely love it. And me and Jack are just so happy here. I used to think that I needed to be in a city or, you know, be around hustle and bustle. And I, don't get me wrong, I need that every now and again. I like feeling like I'm involved in the community and things like that. I enjoyed being around a lot of people, but I found that I was more lonely in London than I am in a place where I hardly ever see anyone. <laughs> um, and that is because a lot of my friends were from here and my family, and I really, really deeply missed my family when I moved down south. But yeah, and obviously we renovated the studio. Yeah, I've just been reflecting on it a little bit this morning. Sometimes I get, get into my head like, am I in the right place? I often like overthink these things and think, do I need to be back in a city where the opportunities are? And But to be honest, I've had more artistic opportunities since I've been living in the countryside than I ever did when I was in Tunbridge Wells in London. Obviously I am more progressed in my career, so that's probably why um, I've got the opportunities now. But yeah, I kind of moved up here and then all of a sudden I got all these opportunities creatively and it just felt like the right place to be. It was like a right, yeah, just the right thing to do. Anyway, that is my little morning ramble. Also really need to figure out this flower situation and I don't know where I'm gonna go with it. Oftentimes I like to just sit and just think and it helps with no distraction. I just sit in my studio, let my mind wander and then all of a sudden it'll just come to me. So I'm gonna give myself some time today to do that. This is why I love coming walking. I've just had a bloody good idea for an image and it was all inspired by these like lit up foliage with the frost coming in and the sun coming through. I'm just imagining like a real like minty, pastely, really light coloured image. I have done another coat. I've put this on. I need to get myself a proper mask. That's something that I'm going to invest in soon. I was really concerned about the floor and I was like, oh, I hope I don't have to paint it again. So down here is where you could see, obviously I've been painting. Yeah, I just gave it a wipe and it's come right off. So that's good. Ideally, I would have been doing this outside, but because it's so cold, I don't think it's going to dry outside. But I'm so glad it just wipes off. <laughs> Thank God. Just need a good clean. There is literally orange dust everywhere. All over here. You can see it all over there. 
this is where we're at now. I've decided I think that I'm just going to focus on spray painting what I can see of this side because this is the side that I'm going to be using. So if you flip it the other way, it's going to be like that angle. Yeah, so when I flip it after it's dried, I'm going to have a look of what is on camera and then just spray paint those bits because I don't want to waste spray paint. I hate the idea of just spray painting the whole thing and it taking up four or five cans of spray paint when I'm going to be reusing this but it's only going to be used in the garden so it doesn't need to be perfect. The only thing that does need to be perfect is the side that's going to be shown on camera and obviously the inside of it but even then I don't even know if I'm going to do the whole thing. I'll probably just do like a band around the top or just like the the sides inside because when I do the floral display or whatever I'm going to do, I'm not sure yet, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do next. You won't be able to see it so essentially I'm not going to waste any more paint than I need to. Not much progress obviously because I've just got, it's just drying time. I'm trying to get this done ASAP. Yeah, drying time is taking up all my time. <laughs> Where I am at with this project, I have got a little bit stuck in the process of conceptualising this. I say stuck. This is what usually happens. It's just I'm documenting it. So it's kind of like I'm having to justify why things are taking so long, etc. Over the course of this past week, I've been deciding and debating whether I want to do this giant floral display. I am not 100% sure that I really want hundreds of fake flowers. I don't know, it kind of is going against all that I'm about. I'm struggling with the fact that I'm going to be spray painting hundreds of fake plastic flowers. It's just not what I really want to do. But I still really want to get to that floral display. I've been having a thought and I know I mentioned earlier in the video about potentially creating the work using AI. I'm happy to do that because I'm, you know, I'm all for the AI movement, especially within my work. I'm really enjoying using it as like little elements not necessarily creating an AI image just from scratch and that being my art. That's up for debate whether it's appropriate to use it that way. I'm not 100% on my opinion of it at the moment, so I'd, I don't want to say what I'm thinking until I'm 100% on what I want to say, if you know what I mean. But with that being said, I am enjoying using it with little elements within my work. So today, I actually just wanted to sit down quickly, maybe go through my old work and see what elements I could add in. So go through the green, orange, pink and yellow projects and just see what I can add into them. And I just wanna have a play around with it. Right, I'm gonna open Photoshop and bring it in. In fact, I might just take this bow out. Every time I touch it, I can hear that noise and it's very irritating me. Oh. I opened up my green project and I'm just gonna have a play around with generative fill in on the green project. As you can see here, I really went to town with the butterflies in this project and I wanted to see what would happen if I circled an area, green butterfly. It does match up the lighting and everything, but we'll see if it's actually gonna... Uh, yeah, see, it, it kind of brings in a butterfly that I don't really want. So I'm not happy with that one, but let me put in... I had a vision last night and I was thinking, what would happen if I put green frame? Would it mimic the one that's already on the wall or would it create a new green frame? Green frame. <laughs> I can't talk with these Invisalign, as you probably already guessed. They make me like, I can't actually, so I can't bite down properly. Oh, it's not done too bad there. That one has, oh, I'm pleasantly surprised about that. With a bit of like editing and color change, I could probably make that work. Let's zoom back out a bit. Yeah, that's actually not done too bad. I'm gonna generate again and just see. Right, well, that one's a bit weird. Then I was thinking like, let's put another candlestick here and see what happens. Green candlestick with green candle. Oh, <laughs> interesting. See, this is what I worried about. It's kind of matched the vibe. Right, with the pink project, let's just go wild and put pink cloud. 
I did want to keep these projects all like real sets, but I'm having like a real pull towards experimenting with the AI because I don't want to paint hundreds of plastic flowers. Oh my God, I love that. Looks like icing. Mm, that ain't weird. That looks like a cutout, but that's really funny. Let's do a pink hat. <laughs> I actually love that. Do you know what? This is actually inspiring me because I'm thinking, what if I did like an image where if I created all these different props and then added in the AI element and you had to sort of guess which part is the AI and which part is the real i feel like that'd be quite interesting oh my god i actually really love that hat look how much different that makes the image <laughs> i love it so cute right let's go on to the yellow let's just see if it can add in add in another i spell that wrong see that what has happened there i don't know i don't know what i would call them not garland. This is the problem with it being abstract is that sometimes I don't know what words to use to describe what I mean. I feel like it should give you an option, things to add in. Obviously that has not worked at all. So let's do something else. Let's just put in a massive sunflower here. Huge sunflower. See, I could, I could go absolutely wild and I can imagine, like imagine the orange backdrop, me there with the orange wheelbarrow. I can do the arm coming across with the watering can and then I could add in loads and loads and loads and loads of AI flowers. I think this might require a test shoot. Yeah, so like that kind of that angle. I've just quickly set up the wheelbarrow in kind of the angle that I would want it and I'm going to open it up into Photoshop, remove background, see what happens there oh no that didn't work take the background off very 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 quickly i really like my canvases to be eight by ten or four by five i have not got the tools at the moment to be doing this my pen is inside my wacom tablet pen is inside let's say orange flowers oh <laughs> interesting not kind of what i expected didn't want that uh, I'm going to say monochrome orange flowers. Okay, that's a little bit better. Orange display. Oh, that didn't work either. <laughs> that is not what I wanted. Let's do like a big floral display on the floor. Monochrome orange display. See, that's getting better there. Right, right, let's try that again. Let's do another one. Monochrome orange floral arrangement of flowers. Let's just put out loads of words and see what happens. Oh, okay. Better. Definitely better. Okay, that's be a lot better, actually. See, I knew it had the capabilities. Oh, see, that's better. See, that's better. That's exactly... Ah, oh, they're marigolds as well. That's really cute. I grew a lot of marigolds in my garden this year just to keep the pests away from my vegetables. What would happen if I did it, like, going over there? Throwing the same words at it. Okay, that is not what I wanted. Fl I'm going to put monochrome orange flowers overflowing... It's like extended the wheelbarrow there. And I don't know what that big cross is, but yeah, I could just go wild with this. I mean, they do look a bit like mushy around here, but these actually look not too bad. Watering can. Hee <laughs> hee, that's cute. I like that one. I think this is definitely making me more excited about this idea. I'm excited to see this idea come to life now because I can visualize it a bit better through the use of AI. I don't know. Let's do it like this, waterfall in. That is a bit better, but fun though. Right, I'm gonna have to go because my battery is gonna die on this. So I better stop that. Hope you enjoyed having a look at how I could use AI in my work. I'm still debating whether to do flowers in real life or AI flowers, but that'll be something that I think about over the next week or two. This project is gonna be definitely spread into the new year because I'm not quite 100% on it and I'm ready for a break shortly. 
um, with Christmas coming up. I'll probably be in the studio, I'll definitely be filming still, but I like to just take my time over Christmas and enjoy the Christmas period, especially with it being so intense this year. We've got some family health issues going on. We've not been given a break this year and it's obviously the death anniversary of my nana who died over Christmas. So we're all a bit like trying to like navigate this time a little bit and it's obviously gonna be quite an intense period. So I'm gonna take the time off there. Yeah. I'm excited to see where this project takes me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.